in the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us on our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward and you embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace and feed us at the table of your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let your stead The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me a share of the property that will belong to me. So the father divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country. 
and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he sent off and went to his father, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. The slave replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then the elder brother became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, all of these years I've never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him? Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me. And all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I know many of us have heard this story before, the story of the prodigal son. I know that many of us have had so many different thoughts and interpretations and takes on this story about how it is that all of this takes place. And yet, I think that's probably the good part of a parable, isn't it? A story that gets us thinking and and being engaged with our imagination as to how it is that God is making all of these things happen and take place. I think it's also a powerful reminder about how God acts. Ultimately, that's what how all of Jesus' parables work. They, they're intimate reminders about how God, our Lord and Creator, acts in all times and places. In this story, in this parable of the prodigal son, we are reminded of God's lavish and abundant grace shown upon God's people. Now you may be wondering, but is this story fair? What about that son who was always there, who was always doing exactly the right thing, always trying to be the best behave and follow through and listen to all of the things that their father had told them? What about that son? Doesn't that son deserve something? Doesn't, hasn't that son earned something? And yet when we go down that path, when we convince ourselves that we are in the place of the son who's always done everything right, always behaved, always was on time, never missed a late payment, always made sure that they were doing exactly what they were supposed to do, never stayed out too late, always returned the car with a full tank of gas, 
are we, are we doing it for God's glory or in an attempt to earn glory for ourselves? Now, I know that might come as a bit of a shock for some of us who feel that they have been the ones who've always done everything just right. Well, surely I, I haven't misused or mistaken or, or misunderstood my place in the family and community. Truth is, all of us, regardless of where we fall in our own families, within our own communities, within the greater diversity and ecosystem of existence, we're all flawed, broken, fragile human beings, capable of doing both great good and really goofing things up. That's what this parable is ultimately about, yes? It's about seeing how in the midst of all of this back and forth, up and down, there are good times and there are bad times. When the son who seems to have squandered everything, given everything away, totally ruined any shot about being reunited with his family or father, when that son comes back, our gut visceral thoughts are, well, you know what, they have it coming. They deserve all of this that's come their way. But that's not how the father acts. That's not how our God acts. Rather, our Lord, in this story, in this parable, the example of God is a father who shows great mercy, care, and love because the son that was thought to be dead is alive. And it's a miracle that this son has come back because of after everything that has happened, all that has transpired, all of the poor choices that have taken place the love still remains. Can we say the same about ourselves this day? Can we say the same about our own families, our own communities, our own interactions with each other? Can we still say that after all of the stuff that has taken place, the love, the love still remains? Our Lord God shares this parable, this story with us as an example of how, yes, yes, we can still love even amongst all of the other stuff. And not just love abundantly for the ones who stick it around, who stick through, who are there no matter what, but love for the ones that are struggling who think that they have it all figured out and go off on their own way only for it to end up blowing up in the end. To yes, even love the ones that think they have it all figured out. To love the ones that think that they can figure it out on their own. We, each and every one of us, receive this love through God's grace every single day. And by that same grace that we have received, we are called to turn that back to one another. Not throw it in each other's face, but rather show God's love through our own care and compassion. Allow ourselves to be extensions of that same love and compassion that we hear about in this story. To embrace one another as if each person that we meet is that person who was thought once dead, whom is found alive, and whose life deserves to be celebrated and rejoiced for because they are such a beautiful, precious child of God. In our Lenten journey that we are on, through these days and weeks, God continues to show us so many different ways that this love of the Lord is present. May our hearts be open. May our eyes see and perceive. May our ears be listening intentively for the ways in which we can show that same love. A love that comes 
without limitations from a heavenly, compassionate parent in God who longs for only the best for each and every one of us children of our Heavenly Father. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for family. Thank you for food. Thank you for safety. Thank you for your love. We pray for family, friends, and everyone in our lives. We pray for people who don't have basics like food, water, and shelter. We pray for the sick. We pray for the people who have been displaced by conflicts. We hope that their lives will get better. Help them to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Bring peace, O oh God. We release all our concerns to you, spoken and unspoken. Amen. Amen. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen.